Hi everybody, just wanted to introduce this video showing a beautiful swarm in one of my apiaries up the road. We're now at the end of October and all that swarm season and queen cells seem so far away from right now. It's absolutely lashing down outside. The weather is absolutely frightful and the fire inside is delightful, I think as the song goes. So enjoy the video and I've got a couple of others coming up soon that I found as well on my laptop. I've just been going through the whole lot. So we've got some stuff to catch up on over the winter and I hope you enjoy it. Take care, speak to you soon. Bye bye. So just on my way past this apiary to just see everything's okay and boy am I glad I just popped in because here we have one big swarm. So I was carrying in the truck a couple of hives I've just taken out from an apiary I'm not using anymore that were just waiting for me to collect and um, one's full of honey I managed to build a ramp get underneath there and hopefully I'll get this swarm. This swarm will give me honey, it's huge, you know? Massive swarm. But I've got to go and find where it's from amongst all that lot, but I think it's the second hive. So we shall see. But. It's a really nice size swarm, which is great. So I'm just gonna give this a good old shake. Got this uh, door which will work perfectly. I think most of it's pretty loose actually, it'll actually pull in pretty well. It's almost floating, <laughs> sinking its way down towards the door. So if we can see a queen in there, there should be a marked queen in here. Look at that, amazing. Now there's honey in this hive, so I'm hoping that um, they're going to go straight to it. So, see what happens. It's always a few seconds of confusion. Hopefully they'll start fanning soon. And they're still going the other way and they're maybe going in. Let's see what's going to happen. There goes the Nazanov gland. The great thing about nice weather is um, it's likely that the queen swarms when they are absolutely ready to go. In other words, they don't have to wait for the bad weather to clear. So, in that respect, there won't be many virgin queens in this. Usually they'll just go when they're ready. Whereas when you have bad weather, they tend to have to wait and then a lot of virgin queens hatch out and a lot of the queens go with the first swarm, which creates problems later on, I find. The bees are calling in there, they're starting to go in the box, but there's still a load at the back going the other way, trying to crawl back up the tree. So let's just see what happens here. I think we're starting to go in. There's so much nasal nothing going on here. I always maintain with bees, they are reliably unreliable. And just when you think you've got it sussed, they do something else. But I think we're at loggerheads at the moment. I think we're Deciding to go in the box. It's difficult to say how this is going to go. It looks like we're suddenly turning the tide. A 
because in this box here, I this was the only hive I had that um, that hadn't that had a, a dodgy colony in all spring, and I hadn't really done anything with it. It hadn't done anything at all, but it had loads of honey in it. So this is perfect for what they want. It's fairly clean. There's a tiny bit of wax moth starting, but they'll clean all that out. And I think we're going the other way now. I think we've changed the tide. Yeah. Good. See if we can spot a queen. She might have gone straight in when that big surge hit the front of the hive. So I couldn't say, but we'll keep our eyes out and see what we can see. If I can find a couple of virgin queens, I'll take them out. Yep, we're going in now, slowly but surely. The march has started. It's actually something to be said for preparing the ground area if you can first. Even if you put a white sheet down and it's not flat and it's not perfect, it does enable the bees to all stay in the same area and not get caught up in undergrowth. It does a really good job. Well, they like that corner. They're all pouring in there. Yep, the march has started. Maybe they found the honey. This was very lucky to be honest, because a lot of these swarms could have been up in there, anywhere, you know? But to find another one this low down is just, I think I've been obviously selecting the right genetics when I've been grafting. I've been choosing those ones that always swarm low down, <laughs> if that was possible. <laughs> but there you go, things are working out now. I'd like to spot Queenie. I'm sure she's marked from this colony. It's a really big prime swarm. It's just a shit that that won't be gathering honey. But, well, that the hive it came from probably won't be very much. But this colony will, and I'll be able to split at the end of the summer in six weeks, and it'll give me a, a split. So it's not all lost, and I have gained a colony if I'm careful with the other half. So, we shall see. So if you don't know about moving swarms, when bees are in swarm mode, they basically have um, scrambled memories, to be frank. And you can move the hive the same afternoon, providing the majority of bees are in it. Because as soon as they lose that queen, or that following of the queen, they'll go back to the hive they came from. So if I found the queen and just took her away, eventually all the bees would go back. But I don't really want to do that because I think there's also virgin queens in this as well. There always is a few, but it's not, it's not ideal. It does work, but it means you, you know, I, I actually do prefer if bees are going to swarm to make a clean break. But what I'm getting at is you just come back of an evening and you can move this colony to wherever in the apiary you want. And then they start afresh from the next morning. It's like they have their program wiped. So it's very handy because I can, I've got a couple of gaps at the back. I want to put this in. And it's in a different place to always try and put it in a different place to where it was. So they've got new landmarks to, to find and to remember. But once you've done that, you will find that, um, the colony will start really quickly. I had a swarm at home to yesterday in the morning. I checked it in the evening and then she'd already started laying eggs. It was unbelievable. So I suspect there's a queen up in that cluster there somewhere, but I'm gonna give it a little shake in a minute and see if we can just get her moving down a little bit quicker to see what's in this lot. But they're all going in.
I think there's probably going to be a big pile of bees under that top corner. But they'll all filter down when they're ready. It's always an amazing spectacle when you see this. They're all going in now, pretty rapid. Look at that. Well, I did find the queen in the end. I didn't have a chance to video it, but I marked her. She wasn't marked, so I'm, but I marked her with twin colors just to be sure that if there was another one or she disappears and there's another queen, I, I kind of have an idea of what's going on. I'm gonna move this straight away now into the apiary and I'm off home to do some more grafting. I'll have to find this other hive tomorrow that needs cell, cells cut out. I haven't got time to do it now. So much to do all the time. I hope you enjoyed that. All a bit of fun. It just shows you no matter what you do sometimes, some queens are just going to go no matter how uh, how much you cut out cells, how much you cut out cups. Obviously, now I'm of the opinion if you find closed cells, you're better off making a nuke from that queen and then putting something else in quickly and cutting out all their existing cells. Leaving it a couple of days and putting a new queen if you've got them because that's the only way you guarantee to keep your bees. She just needs to get through that swarmy period, you know, and uh, sometimes it's baffling. Uh, I, as I said before, bees are predict predictably unpredictable. So on that note, anyway, we've got all these bees all in the box. So on that note, I'll uh, say goodbye and catch you again soon. Bye for now.